Hello students, welcome to the lecture on full convertibility and financial institution and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe concept of media relation, discuss advantages of media relation, analyze the disadvantages of media relation, explain the function of media relation, describe the forms of media, understand media relations dealing, explain the basic principles of media relation. Let's start with the concept of full convertibility and financial institution. Convertibility of the domestic currency is one of the prerequisites for complete globalization of any economy. Along with decontrols of free movement of goods and services, removal of tariff and non-tariff restriction and easier mobility of the workforce, convertibility is one of the important cornerstones of the process of globalization and economic reforms. Current account convertibility is already there and the stringent controls of pre-90s over the foreign exchange have also been relaxed to a great extent. The stringent foreign exchange regulation act FERA was replaced by a relaxed act called foreign exchange management act FEMA making the movement of foreign exchange easier. Resident Indians and companies now have access to foreign exchange for various purposes including education and travel. They can also receive and make payments in foreign currencies on trade account. Full convertibility implies that the existing restrictions on the capital account would also be withdrawn. Foreign exchange has been allowed to flow into Indian stock markets through registered institutional investors. In addition, many categories of the resident Indians have been allowed to open foreign currency accounts abroad. Indian companies have also been making overseas acquisition for which they have been given access to foreign currency resources. It would however be wrong to presume that full convertibility on the capital account would result in lifting off all the restrictions. Even the developed countries like the USA block foreign investment in some of the sectors. Despite the government decision in this regard, it has not been easy for the non-resident Indians to acquire property and real estate in the country. The government of India though has allowed direct foreign investment FDI in most of the fields, yet certain caps have been put by the government on the FDI in some of the sectors. Let us now discuss the concept of capital account and full convertibility. Full converted of the currency means the local currency can be exchanged to foreign currency without any governmental control. Presently, the issue of capital account convertibility is in the discussion stage. Capital account convertibility means the freedom to convert domestic financial assets at market determines rates. It can also imply conversion of overseas financial assets into domestic financial assets. Broadly stage, it would mean freedom to firms and acquire ownership of overseas firms besides free repatriation of proceeds by foreign investors. The committee had provided a roadmap for the economy to whereas most mental health programs are moved towards full convertibility step by step and the time frame was 1997 to 2000. The committee had also laid down certain preconditions for implementing the reforms, but nothing much happened during that phase. One of the main problems an economy which has opted for a free oath has to contend with is the prospect of outflow of what is termed as speculative short term flows. Current account convertibility refers to currency convertibility required in the case of transaction relating to exchange of goods and services, money transfers and all those transactions that are classified in the current account. A current account refers to goods and services income and current transfer, example export or import of goods and services. Current account convertibility allows free inflows and outflows for all purposes other than for capital purposes such as investment and loans. Capital account convertibility refers to convertibility requiring a transaction of capital flows that are classified under the capital account of the balance of payments. The RBI has defined capital account convertibility CAC as a freedom to convert local financial assets into foreign financial assets and vice versa at market determined rates of exchange without any sort of intermediation and regulation. A capital account refers to capital transfers and acquisition or disposal of non-produced non-financial assets. Example, purchase or sale of property, ownership in a firm, etc. Capital account convertibility allows free movement from local currency into foreign currency and backed. 
freedom to residents to convert local financial assets into foreign assets and or to take on foreign liabilities and invest proceeds in India or abroad. Freedom to non-residents to create rupee assets or liabilities and alter them. In other words, one would be free to keep money in a Swiss bank and save. Microsoft could say a rupee bond in the Indian market. It is intended for local merchants to easily conduct transnational business freely without any regulation or control. Use of Capital Account Convertibility In case a currency is fully capitaled account convertible, then anybody from anywhere in the world can invest in any asset in that currency. Thus, a US citizen could buy a flat in India, allow it to appreciate and sell the same and take his contribution as well as the profits out of India to the US freely. Since this is not allowed in India and the government has its own rules and policies to regulate foreign investment, one says that India does not have full CAC. The CAC also allows the people and companies not only to convert one currency to another, but also free cross-border movement of those currencies without the intervention of the law of the country concerned. Thus, Indians could convert their rupees into dollars and park it in US if there was capital account convertibility here. Imagine if a large number of Indians were to do this out of an irrational fear that India might go to war with Pakistan. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the preconditions of capital account convertibility. The logic for the introduction of complete capital account convertibility in India, according to the recommendation of the Tara Poor Committee, is to ensure total financial mobility in the country. It also helps in the efficient appropriation or distribution of international capital in India. Such allocation of foreign funds in the country helps in equalizing the capital return rate not only across different borders but also escalates the production levels. Moreover, it brings about a fair allocation of the income level in India as well as a gross fiscal deficit to GDP ratio as to come down from a budgeted 4.5% in 1997 to 98 to 3.5% in 1999 to 2000. A consolidated sinking fund has to be set up to meet government's debt repayment needs to be financed by increased in RBI's profit transfer to the government and this investment proceeds. Inflation rates should remain between an average 3 to 5 percent for the three year period 97 to 2000. Gross NPAs of the public sector banking system needs to be brought down from the present 13.7 percent to 5 percent by 2000. At the same time, average effective CRR needs to be brought down from the current 9.3 percent to 3 percent. RBI should have a monitoring exchange rate band of plus minus 5 percent around a neutral real effective exchange rate. RBI should be transparent about the changes in REER. CAC, Capital Account Convertibility. For Indian economy, it refers to the abolishment of all limitations with respect to the movement of capital from India to different countries across the globe. In fact, the authorities officially involved with CAC capital account convertibility for Indian economy encourage all companies, commercial entities and individual countrymen for investment, divestment and real estate transactions in India as well as abroad. It also allows the people and companies not only to convert one currency to the other, but also free cross-border movement of those currencies without the interventions of the law of the country concerned. Benefits and drawbacks of CAC To sum up, CAC is concerned about the ownership changes in the domestic or foreign financial assets and liabilities. It also represents the formation and liquidation of financial claims on or by the remaining world. It enables relaxation of the capital account, which is under tremendous pressure from the commercial sectors of India, along with the financial capitalists, the reputed commercial firms in India jointly derive and enjoy the benefits of the CAC policy, which speculate the stock markets through investment. In fact, the CAC policy in India is pursued primarily to gain the speculator and the punter's confidences in the stock markets. However, CAC does not serve the purposes of the real sectors of Indian economy like eradication of poverty, escalation of the employment rates and other inequalities. Let us now discuss the financial institution. A financial institution is an institution that provides financial services for its clients or members, act as financial intermediaries. Objective of financial institution 
to transform financial assets acquired through the market and constitute them into a different and more widely preferable type of asset which becomes their liability. This is the function performed by financial intermediaries, the most important type of financial institution. To exchange financial assets on behalf of customer, to exchange of financial assets for their own account, to assist in the creation of financial assets for their customers and then selling those financial assets to other market participants, to provide investment advice to other market participants, to manage the portfolios of other market participants. Examples of financial institution, banks, stock brokerage firms, non-banking financial institution, building societies, asset management firms, credit unions, insurance companies. Function of financial institution. Financial institutions offer various types of transformation services, liability asset transformation. They issue claims to their customers that have characteristics different from those of their own assets. For example, banks accept deposit as liability and convert them into assets such as loans. Size transformation. They choose and manage portfolios whose risk and return they alter by applying resources by acquire better information and to reduce or overcome transaction costs. They provide large volumes of finance on the basic of small deposit of unit capital risk transformation. They distribute risk through diversification and thereby reduce it for savers as in the case of mutual funds. The Reserve Bank is one of the few central banks that have taken an active and direct role in supporting developmental activities in their country. The Reserve Bank's developmental roles include ensuring credit to productive sectors of the economy, creating institutions to build financial infrastructure and expanding access to affordable financial services. Over the years, its developmental role has extended to institution building for facilitating the availability of diversified financial services within the country. The Reserve Bank today also plays an active role in encouraging efficient customer service throughout the banking industry as well as extension of banking service to all through the trust on financial inclusion. Recognizing the important role of exports in maintaining the viability of external sector and in generating employment, the Reserve Bank had sought to ensure adequate availability of concessional bank credit to exporters. It took the lead role in setting up the Export-Import Bank of India, EXIM Bank, in January 1982. Objective of RBI To manage the monetary and credit system of the country, to stabilize its internal and external value of rupee, for balance and systematic development of banking in the country, for the development of organized in the money market in the country, for proper arrangement of agriculture finance, for proper arrangement of industrial finance, to establish monetary relations with other countries of the world international financial institution, for proper management of public debts, for centralization of cash reserves of commercial banks. Hi, welcome to this session, an introduction to Reserve Bank of India. RBI is the apex bank governing the Indian banking system. Objective of this session is to learn the key functions of RBI. Looking on to its structure, RBI consists of Central Board of Directors which are 20 in number. One Governor, he is appointed by the Government of India for a term of 5 years. He can be reappointed for another term. There are 4 Deputy Governors and 15 other Directors which are dominated by Central Government for a term of 5 years. Besides the Central Board, there are local boards for four regional areas of the country. It, their headquarters are based at Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai and New Delhi. Local boards consist of five members each appointed by the central government for a term of four years to represent territorial and economic interests. The head office of the bank is situated in Mumbai and the offices of the local boards are situated at Delhi, Kolkata and Chennai. RBI has opened local offices or branches also in the several cities. Moving on to the basic function. RBI has the sole right to issue banknotes of all denominations. The distribution of rupee notes and coins all over the country 
is undertaken by the RBI as the agent of the government. RBI has a separate issue department which is entrusted with the issue of currency notes. The assets and the liabilities of the issue department are kept separate from those of the banking department. The second important function of the RBI is to act as government banker, its agent and an advisor. RBI is the agent of central government and of all the state governments in India except Jammu and Kashmir. RBI has the obligation to transact government business, that is, to keep the cash balances or its deposits free of interest, to receive and to make payments on behalf of the government, and also to carry out their exchange remittance and other banking operations. RBI helps the government, both the union and the states, to float new loans and to manage public debt. It acts as an advisor to the government on all monetary and banking matters. RBI also acts as controller of credit. It holds the cash reserves of all the scheduled banks. It controls the credit operations. It controls the banking system through licensing, inspection and calling of information. It also acts as the lender of the last resort. The Reserve Bank of India has the responsibility to maintain the official rate of exchange. After India became a member of IMF in 1946, RBI has the responsibility of maintaining fixed exchange rates with all other member countries. Besides maintaining the rate of exchange of rupee, Reserve Bank has to act as the custodian of India's reserve of international currencies. Now, let's discuss some key terms related to RBI functioning. Policy rate. It is the short-term interest rate that the central bank manipulates through open market operations. Some recent figures are also mentioned for your reference. Reserve Ratio It is the RBI regulation that sets the minimum fraction of customer deposits and notes that each associate bank must hold as its reserves. Recent figures of CRR and SLR are also mentioned for your reference. Exchange Rates RBI looks at the four key international currencies namely US Dollar, Euro, yen and pound sterling for the monetary and regulatory functions export import exim bank of india export import bank of india exim bank is a coordinator and facilitator for the promotion of project exports the bank serves as the focal point of the working group on project exports and plays a pivotal role in supporting indian companies in execution of projects by offering both funded and non-funded facilities for overseas industrial turnkey projects, civil construction contracts, supplies as well as technical and consultancy service contracts. Project exports from India have been increasing steadily over the years, indicating the growing stature of Indian expertise overseas in a wide range of activities and upward movement in the value chain of its export performance. The Export Import Bank of India is the apex institution for project finance which provides direct finance and coordinates the working of the institution which is engaged in financing export or import of goods and services it has taken over the operation of international finance wing of the industrial development bank of india idbi the exim bank of india came into existence on 1st january 1982 and started functioning from 1st march 1982 it has its headquarters in Mumbai and its branches and offices in important cities in India and abroad. The SIDBI was set up in October 1989 under the Act of Parliament as a wholly owned subsidiary of the IDBI. It is a central or apex or principal institution which oversees, coordinates and further strengthens various arrangements for providing financial and non-financial assistance to small-scale, tiny and cottage industries.
A development bank may be defined as a financial institution concerned with providing all types of financial assistance, medium as well as long term, to business units in the form of loans, underwriting, investment and guarantee operation and development in general and industrial area. Objectives of SIDBI to initiate steps for technological upgradation and modernization of existing units, to expand channels for marketing of SSI sector products in India and abroad, to promote employment-oriented industries in semi-urban areas, and to check migration of population to big cities. It operates two funds, Small Industrial Development Fund and Small Industries Development Assistance Fund. The operation of the former and of National Equity Fund, which were earlier looked by IDBI, is now handled by the SIDBI. Its financial assistance is channeled through the existing credit delivery system comprising NSICs, SIDCs, SSIDCs, commercial banks, cooperative banks and RRBs. The total number of institutions eligible for assistance from SIDBI is 900. It discounts and re-discounts bills arising from the sale of machinery to small units extend seed capital or soft loan assistance through national equity fund and through seed capital schemes of specialized lending institution refinance loans and provide services like factoring leasing and so on the union budget 1996 to 97 envisage a number of measures to develop small scale sector with sidbi as the focal point they include SIDBI will now refinance the SFCs and commercial banks for modernization projects up to INR 50 lakhs from unutilized corpus of about INR 75 crore. SIDBI's refinance a ceiling of INR 50 lakhs for single window scheme of SFCs etc. for composite loans will be doubled to INR 100 lakhs. SIDBI will participate in venture capital funds set up by public sector institutions as well as private companies up to 50% of the total corpus of the fund provided such fund is dedicated to the financing of small scale industry. SIDBI will provide refinance lending institutions which are now permitted to lend to SSI units seeking ISO certification of quality. Since its inception, SIDBI has provided assistance to the entire SSI sector including tiny, village and cottage industries through suitable schemes tailored to meet the requirement of setting up of new products, expansion, diversification, modernization and rehabilitation. It has provided equity, capital, domestic and foreign currency term loans, working capital, finance etc. SIDBI has entered into MOU with many banks, governmental agencies, international agencies, R&D institution and industry association for developing SSIs. In the foreign exchange market where different currencies are bought and sold, it is essential to know the ratio between different currencies. How many units of one currency will equal one unit of another currency? The ratio between two currencies is known as an exchange rate. The various exchange rates are regularly quoted in newspapers and periodicals. Major currencies in the world are USD, Euro, Yen, GPB, CAN, Dollar, Swiss Francs, AUS, Dollar. There are two methods for quoting exchange rates, direct quote and indirect quote. Direct quote. A direct quote gives the home currency price of a certain amount of foreign currency, usually 1 or 100 units. If India quotes the exchange rate between the rupee and the US dollar in a direct way, the quotation will be written as INR 35 US dollar. A direct quote places domestic currency on the numerator of the quote. Indirect quote. In the indirect quoting, the value of one unit of home currency is presented in terms of foreign currency. If India adopts indirect quotation, the banks in India will quote the exchange rate as US dollar 0.2857 INR indirect quote domestic currency place in denominator. Determination of exchange rate in the spot market. The exchange rate between two currencies in the floating rate regime is determined by the interplay of demand and supply forces. The exchange rate between say the rupee and the US dollar depends upon the demand for the US dollar and its availability or supply in the Indian foreign exchange rate. The demand for foreign currency comes from individuals and firms who have to make payments in foreign currency mostly on account of import of goods and services and purchase of securities. The supply of foreign exchange results from the receipt of foreign currency normally on account of export 
or sales of financial securities to foreign entities. Now in the end let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Full converted of the currency means the local currency can be exchanged to foreign currency without any governmental control. Convertibility of the domestic currency is one of the prerequisites for complete globalization of any economy. Recognizing the important role of exports in maintaining the viability of external sector and in generating employment, the Reserve Bank had sought to ensure adequate availability of consensual bank credit to exporters. Export Import Bank of India, EXIM Bank, is the coordinator and facilitator for the promotion of project exports. The SIDBI was set up in October 1989 under the Act of Parliament as a wholly owned subsidiary of the IDBI.